Hello, everybody. Hello and happy Sunday. So excited to see so many great folks in the room with us today at 71 people and counting. We are so delighted you decided to spend your Sunday noon time here with us and uh, or your Sunday 5 p.m. time if you're out in the UK or your Sunday 9 a.m. time if you're coming in from the West Coast. Welcome everybody to the Daily Antidote. Super excited to be in this room with Jubilee Voices uh, on our culminating day of our two weeks of singing for racial justice. Couldn't think of a possible better way to end than to be in this room right now with this amazing crew. I am gonna say hellos to everybody um, and including the Jubilee Voices folks. Hello, Jim and Khadija and Andrea and Harold and Paulette and Jackie and Christina and hello to Sharon and hello to Keith. Hello to Aaron Geyer who's running the tech today. Hello to Becky in Vancouver, Betsy in, uh, from Washington Rebels. Tom, hello, nice to see you today. Susan in Ohio, hello. Karen in Utah, Rosalie in Michigan, Annette in California. Hello, Kate in Charlottesville and Sarah in Texas and Carolyn in Idaho and Arlene in California. Hello, Christiana and Bob in Rockville and Caroline in Maryland. Doug in Vermont, hello. Hello, Dan in Virginia and Bonnie in Idaho. Lisa in Indiana. Hello, Jenny, good to see you today. And Julia, nice to have you coming in today. Also helping out on the tech, we're glad you're here. Hello, Brian, nice to have you today. Sue in California, Trish in Victoria, Deli in Maryland. Hello, Fred in Maryland and Greg Lewis, Washington Rebels, hello. Luda and Mark, NBC, hello. Nice to have both of you today. Janice in Ohio, Beth in Kentucky, Toby in California, we have our Toby back. Nice to see you, Toby, it's been a while. We're glad you're here. Hello, Kevin in New Hampshire. Patrice in Connecticut, Terry, hello, Lynn in Connecticut, hello, Ann in Maryland, and Carol, nice to have you today, Susan and Shirley outside of Gettysburg, hello and hello, hello, Thea, nice to have you today, we're glad you're with us, Storm in Massachusetts, Fran in D.C., hello, long time no see, we're glad you're back, hello, Barb in Kentucky, hello, C.L. and Sarah and Deborah and Amos and Toby, no, Tony and Hindi and the mommy and all lots of other folks uh, with their video off. We're all glad you guys are here today. Thank you so much for joining. And to the other folks who are actually just coming into the room, hello. And again, hello to everybody out there on Facebook Live. What a perfect way to start a Sunday or finish a Sunday with a room full of smiling, beautiful faces of a giant community that has come together in these pandemic times. Can we all please take a deep breath and give everybody in the room a hug? It's really nice to be with you all. So I am so excited today to be turning over the hosting ship to a dear friend and colleague, Andrea Blackford, who is coming in from Virginia. She is the uh, director of the Jubilee Voices Ensemble, which I believe is at now 10 years old. And Andrea, I'm super glad you're leading us today. Can you take it away? Yes, thank you, everyone. Thank you for that hug. I felt it all the way here and I'm gonna need it. Um, welcome today and we're gonna finish off our, our musical journey through social justice by singing a song I bet most of you know. It's called, Oh Freedom. It was a post-Civil War song that became quite popular, so popular that it survived antebellum South. It became part of the civil rights movement, an anthem, and an anthem for a war over the world for social justice everywhere. So um, it, was, it was basically an adaptation of a traditional song for civil rights period by the Student Nonviolent Coordinating Council or SNCC. And the freedom singers from SNCC have stayed together and they sing this song. It's a beautiful song, check it out on YouTube. But um, for now, we're going to sing some of the songs, some of the verses that were popular during the Civil War, as well as some of the verses that were used during the Civil Rights Movement. So how many of you know this song? Just raise your hands, your physical hand. Okay, we're going to have a lot of work to do. So this is how the chorus goes. It's call and response, like most African-American traditional music is. And you will sing, oh, oh, freedom, oh, freedom. Let's try that together. Oh, oh, oh freedom, oh, oh, freedom. 
Now let's try this in context. It's a little lower. Oh, oh freedom. Oh, freedom. Got that? Oh, freedom over me. And before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Okay, is this recognizable to people? So what you're gonna do is when you hear the, the song leader sing the verse, you're going to pick up the words they sang and sing it as well. And we go through all the verses and then we end with O oh, Freedom in a grand rafter ringing chorus, even though we are mute. We're in our homes. Let's hear those roofs ring, okay? Y'all ready? All right, I'm gonna play the C so everybody, can, we're starting on C for those who are keeping track. And we will start with Jim. You ready, Jim? Yes. All right. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. And before I'd be a slave, I'd be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. No, no more moaning, no more moaning, no more moaning over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. No more weeping, no more weeping, no more weeping over me. And before I'd be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. They'll be shouting, they'll be shouting, they'll be shouting about me. And before I be asleep, I'll be buried in my grave. I'll go home to my Lord and be free. They'll be singing, they'll be singing, they'll be singing over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. No more jailhouse, no more jailhouse, no more jailhouse over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. No more shooting. No more shooting. No more 
alone and be free. Oh, freedom, oh, freedom, oh, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. One more time. Oh, oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. And before I be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Wow. Yes. Whew. So I was thinking about this song the other day and how it makes me feel. Do you see how long we've come over the last 150 years? How long we've toiled and, and worked for freedom, how long our ancestors brought us to the place we are now? I'd like to talk a bit about how this makes you feel knowing that there's still a lot of work to do. In Black History Month, we like to celebrate all the accomplishments, but sometimes we don't talk about those accomplishments that are yet to come. Um, with the joy, we have to understand and celebrate some of the suffering. And what can we do to help bring the message of freedom to other people? So can we talk about that, Jubilee Voices? Get a conversation going about that? Well, I think, um, hi, I'm Paulette. And uh, I just, I think um, th these songs represent uh, voices of, of a long time ago, songs that have been passed down from generation to generation to generation. And it's just, it's uh, amazing how even now with uh, uh, our young people uh, so into the movement, especially since uh, last summer with the uprising and the protest march. Um, I, they speak to each generation in a, in a different way because of circumstances that are, are, are going on at that very moment. And I just think these songs are going to, even when all of us are long gone away, we, we, have, we become ancestors that um, these songs are going to be sung over and over and over again. I don't think they'll ever go away. And, and I pray that they don't. I'm always attracted to how the song's lyrics have a meaning in time for when they were written and the people of that time. But like you said, Paulette, the spirit of the song and the music continues to grow and evolve and have meaning for each generation. So for us, we might not, like our ancestors, be talking about a physical death or a physical slavery, although sometimes we are, when we think about the things that are going on now, we have to admit that before we're free or before we go on, something has to give. It's almost like something has to die for something to live. So we, for example, have to get out of our um, me, I, and get into the we, our, before we can enjoy real personal or communal freedom. Um, so I love how the words have great historic meaning and I honor and respect that. And I know that those words were true because people physically died for their freedom. And though I don't have to walk out of the door and physically die for it, I know that some of my habits maybe, or some of my prejudices or some of my, um, I'll stop confessing there, but some of those things have to die in order for me to truly be free and open and forgive 
and move on and, and be a model for my children and for those who come after me um, as an elder, that's a real responsibility. So thanks, Paulette, for bringing that up, that the songs are timeless. Anyone else? Would anybody else like to, to speak on this from the floor? What does this song tell you to do? What, what, what is the mission that you receive from this song in your own life? I mean, for me, um, I take it on another level. I celebrate or I observe Lent. So for the next 40 days, it's about me doing things to sacrifice in preparation for Easter. Your orientation might be different, but for me, this song reminds me in this penitential season that I celebrate that it is important to be conscious of how I interact and um, how I account for being a person who is open, giving, inclusive in my daily interactions. That means for me, not only making sure that I'm inclusive and, and, and giving and dealing with everybody I run across, but I stop myself if something like an inappropriate joke or an inappropriate word comes up. That's how I promote freedom. And for me, it's not just for Lent, of course, but it's something that's going to extend all through the year. But at this special time, I'm making myself more conscious of it. Um, another thing we do is sacrifice. We're going to give money to charitable contributions, charitable organizations, particularly there's a huge need for food in my area. And so we're going to make donations to the food bank. Those are the kinds of things. So how are you helping to promote freedom and inclusivity in your time? And you're, I would love to hear from you. Anyone? I was, um, Khadija brought up dying to self and, and um, as a Catholic for Lent, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, that's what we do. We die to self and we be we're prepared to rise with Christ um, on the third day. And so this is all about you know, spiritual cleansing, looking at yourself and um, trying to be an example for others. Um, so that's what the freedom is for me and um, reaching out, working on self, but also remembering others and reaching out to them as well. Another thing that I did yesterday was I stumbled upon part, another part of my um, family history and ancestry.com. And when I think of O Freedom, I also think of those ancestors marching before me. And that includes my mother and my dear Mama Jones and all those people. I'm discovering names and people of people that made, who made me possible. And that's that legacy of, okay, I did this for you, do this for others is equally important and something to think about and cherish. Does anybody have any other thoughts? Anyone? The room is quiet today. So Andrea, can we take hands from the whole room um, in addition Absolutely. to- Okay, so yes. if anybody if anybody in the room would like to be unmuted, please wave your hand. Um, if you wanna ask a question or make a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And I will scroll around and look for hands. Tom, Tom Bethards, I see you, I'm unmuting you. Go ahead, you're up. I'm gonna unmute you, Tom, and you are okay. now up. Okay, can you hear me now? Yep. Okay, so I know for a fact that I'm descended from slave owners uh, on the Eastern shore and pro almost certainly from my mom who lived, grew up in, was in, is from Mississippi. And so I've tried throughout my life, especially as an adult, to learn more about the real history and get more involved in civil rights. And that's pretty much all I can do, <laughs> try to be a better person than my ancestors were. That's awesome. Thank Rebels you. is a big part of that too. Thank you, Tom. That is awesome. I know that that some that was difficult, and I appreciate your sharing it with the room and us giving you space to to talk about it. Thank you. 
Anybody else want to say anything? I'm scrolling and looking for hands. Please wave at me frantically to make sure I don't miss you. Uh, Karen in Utah, is that a hand? And then I see uh, David Fitz uh, next. Karen, you're up. Hi, I uh, was noting in the chat that Ancestry is actually my employer and I, I came to work for them because of my passion for family history. And one of the things I've been doing lately is um, genealogy has traditionally been, you know, us folks with pilgrims and Puritans in our history bragging about coming over on the Mayflower. And, and I really like what we're doing to expand this passion and this hobby uh, to more underrepresented communities. You know, so, so something I've been doing this month, it started when I was working with Dr. Gates on, uh, um, on his tree, but I've just expanded that out into uh, the Black families from West Virginia and Virginia and Maryland, who often came into DC for work, you know, and then re would retire back up in the hills in their, in their hometowns. And uh, just like using my skills to help people learn about their history who there's often a wall you know right in the 1860s if you descend from slaves although there's lots of free people from ohio and virginia as well but just using my skills and welcoming people from communities that have not been represented when i go to genealogy conventions there's a whole lot of middle-aged and retired white ladies you know so so it's a lot of um, fun to see how we connect my own family, my dad's family is from the Smokies. And so we like to think we were too poor to own people, but you don't have to do too much research to find that it, it was f fairly common, you know? And, and of course, going back further into Virginia and Maryland, it's just pervasive. Um, and so, like I said, using my skills to help draw our human family closer together really means a lot to me. Thank you for your work. Oh, I'm next. I'm mute. David Fitz, you're now unmuted. I'm doing it again. There you go. Okay, here we go. Hi, I'm Sue McKeg, David's wife. He got a little hungry, so he's in the kitchen. I'm connected <laughs> to the group through uh, James Harkless, and um, I'm connected to James through his um, late sister, Nicia Harkless who I met at her 88th birthday and connected. And I've learned what I've learned through the Harkless family. And also in 1984, when I moved to Lexington, Kentucky, I discovered my family journal in Cumberland, Maryland in print. And I would discover I, like this other gentleman from <sighs> slave uh, owners and I just was a California girl kind of living the life before this in a way for sure so uh, when you asked about well what was I doing I thought well, what am I doing well I am making that monthly contribution to our local food bank and my and then paying and going to the red sending money to the red cross and public television and public radio but you know, kind of during COVID, obviously kind of not enough, but trying to educate myself every time I meet a very, you know, interesting, smart black woman and find out what her history is and what I just didn't know. And so I'm just pretty much in awe. I mean, it's not just Black History Month because it's been in my interest now for quite some time. As Nisia used to say, well, I'm a change agent. Well, David and I could identify with a change agent, but I'm not sure we knew exactly what that meant. So, you know, coming here today, I mean, it's on my bucket list to see James in the Jubilee performance. <laughs> so, this is it. <laughs> so that's it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank we you. All have these connections. So that's great. Um, so I'm gonna, I uh, see uh, Deborah Denfeld has a hand uh, raised. So I'm gonna unmute Deborah. And Deborah, you're up. Okay. Um, so I want to acknowledge that Susan uh, G put something really interesting in the chat saying that there's a beautiful mashup of O Freedom and Dianu, which is a song Ooh. that we traditionally sing at uh, Jewish Passover Seder. 
Um, I think that in remembering our own history of slavery, um, it can help us to have more compassion for other people who have been enslaved. And I recently saw a film that's part of the Jewish Film Festival here in Louisville, Kentucky. Um, and it was about the history of the relationship between the civil rights movement and the Jewish community. And um, there are things in the film I'm not real happy about, but I did learn a lot about the history that I didn't already know. And it hurts me that in more recent years, there has been more of a division between the two communities. So um, what can I do? Well, you know, the little things that I do to try and understand more and listen more and reach out more. But I think that there's something really fundamental about looking at our own histories, our own cultures, and then looking for the commonalities to really have a deeper compassion. I agree. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Andrea. So we're going to take one more hand. Greg Lewitt. Oh, actually, we're going to take two more hands. Fran, I see you and I'm unmuting you. Go ahead. Hi. Uh, I just wanted to mention political action because uh, I've been pretty active the last, what, five years now. Um, and there's so many things just because we've got the right president this time. There's so many things that we need to do. I'm working with a group in North Carolina neighbors on call and we're still doing education and canvassing and demonstrating and standing up and at the state level there's so many dangerous things happening that uh, for anybody who has the energy I want to speak for me that's my action but I hope that everybody stays uh, aware about that and if anybody wants to know more about North Carolina ask Joe and she'll put you in touch with me. Thank you, Fran. That's great. And yep, anybody can just email me in the chat. Luda and Mark, are you waving a hand for a question or just waving? Okay. And uh, Greg Lewis, I'm looking for you now. Okay, I'm unmuting you. Go ahead. Great. Thanks, Joe. Um, so um, I've had the, the pleasure of singing with Jubilee Voices and um, along with and sometimes with Jubilee Voices on this song for over a decade. And my original sense was one of solidarity with, with people who have gone through uh, you know, phenomenal things. But with this past year, it, my whole sense of the song personally has changed. Um, the uh, freedom, as, particularly as Rebels has gotten, in, and, and I've gotten more into, into uh, uh, structural racism, systemic racism, et cetera, and so forth. Oh, freedom has come to mean much more. Oh, freedom from, for me, from, from bias from ignorance from uh, from the things anything that has that has contributed to it and the sense of of um, of turning it inward more than than just an, an outward thing and I think that it 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 lends a whole new sense of meaning it certainly has for me Thank you, Greg. Uh, so actually, I saw that we had um, Kate in Charlottesville who also had a hand. Kate, do you still? Yep. Okay, great. I'm unmuting you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay. I was so fortunate to uh, grow up in New York City with parents. We lived across from a synagogue and I went to a church that was black and white. And I think they also had a Haitian um, a Haitian group that, that worshiped there. And here I am in Charlottesville and I know folks who were brought up so differently. And I think the way you were brought up and what you were taught to believe about other people makes a ginormous difference when you're talking about race, when you're 
I also go to a UCC church here and that's opened my eyes a lot. And um, I also, may I say, kind of the opposite of what I said first, I have a cousin who was raised, I know it was a racist and homophobic race um, household. And now he's living with a partner of color in Texas. And so you can rise above the way you were raised, but you can also thank God or whoever, a goddess, for the way you were raised, if you think it was the right way, and you still do. Um, I'm very grateful to everybody who raised me right. That's all. That's beautiful, Kate. Thank you so much. And thank you to all of the people who just uh, volunteered your voice into this space. Um, it's a really, really great space for being able to talk openly. And uh, if I missed you or if you had comments, you're welcome to stay after we close um, for a little more chat once we um, have turned off Facebook. And uh, anybody on Facebook who wants to join us in the room, you're always welcome to go to rebelsdc.org uh, and click on Daily Antidote and click on join us in the virtual room after we turn Facebook off. And uh, for everybody in here, um, other places that you can continue the kinds of discussions that we're having, the uh, different folks in this room meet regularly at a, an organization called Constructive White Conversations that have anti-racist discussions, uh, several opportunities across a month, and lots of us join there. And there's other discussion forums. And as a group, this room is also meeting and doing things on their own. Um, so if you need any more information about any of that, please feel free to email me. My email is in the chat. And uh, Jubilee Voices, I just wanna thank you guys so much for the great comments, the great discussion, the amazing singing. And Andrea, I'm turning it back to you. You can uh, bring us to a close in whatever way you like and um, obviously still keep chatting if you like. Okay, well, everyone, um, I have to say I have received many blessings from all of you with your honest, frank and candid talk about what you're going to do to promote freedom and your, your your experiences and your family backgrounds. It means a lot to be able to be in a place where we can hold space for one another and talk about these things. You see, systemic racism isn't about mean things people do to each other. It's also about the, um, and, and the political things we do, the things that we choose to do. So I feel like we are united and um, this is a wonderful place to share. And one of the things you can do to help promote freedom is to sing about it, all right? So I'd like to sing Oh Freedom, at least a couple of choruses. And if there's any more space for any further discussion, we can do that. Is everybody good with that? Oh, yeah. Great, great. That's wonderful because right now you're all frozen on my screen. So <laughs> it's good to get some. So I'm going to play a C and we're going to just sing the chorus a couple of times. Take a big, let's, let's hum through the chorus and then sing the words. And, and think about what we just talked about. Okay, ready? I'm going to give you all a C. Mm.
be free. One last time. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom. Oh, freedom over me. And before I'll be a slave, I'll be buried in my grave and go home to my Lord and be free. Wonderful, everyone. Oh, my goodness. Couldn't you just feel it? Is there anything else we'd like to talk about? Or are we are we ready to go? Let me know. I think that I think we should absolutely keep the conversation. Jim, is that you with a hand up? Okay, I'm gonna unmute you. You're up. Oops. Go ahead. That, uh, one of the things you forgot is that uh, there'll be a session tonight. Oh, that's right. You know, tonight you can keep the, the, the music going. Thank you for reminding me, James. I appreciate that. Tonight, Carpe Diem and Washington Rebels are holding the community, our, our monthly community sing at um, 6.30 today, the 21st, 6.30 to 7.45 a.m. You can go Kim. to the website and learn more. And um, there will be a bevy of wonderful artists singing, including Issei Barnwell, and Kathy Bullock and so many other people. Well, we're gonna sing songs about Black History Month. We're gonna sing songs about love. We're gonna sing songs for people with birthdays. How many people have birthdays? How many people have birthdays? Happy birthday, y'all. You're gonna hear a bunch of birthday songs, okay? So come celebrate your birthday with us. And Harold and I will be singing. We'll actually be singing an Underground Railroad song in honor of Black History Month. So come see us at 6.37.45. Check out the website to learn more. Also, um, on the 27th, Jubilee Voices will be appearing virtually at the Sandy Springs Slave Museum. Say that fast really three times. It's a mouthful, but it's a great museum. And once they're ever, ever open again, you should go see it. It is amazing. Um, Sandy Spring is a hotbed of African-American history and one of the most well-documented family histories in the nation comes out of Sandy Spring, the Howard Holland family. And you'll learn more about them and their patriarch, Enoch George Howard, when you go see that. And you'll you'll learn a lot. It's 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 we're we're having a lot of fun putting that together. And that's on the 27th. It's at 2 p.m. And look on the Revels website for more information. So that'll be a nice way for you to end your Black History Month. But I want to see you all tonight because we're singing this song from the Underground Railroad that we've just learned. That's right. And it will be debuting it. So we need all your love and support. So I hope to see you there. Thank you, Andrea. And thank you um, to all of Jubilee Voices. I uh, hope you can join us tonight. It's going to be a blast. And uh, it's really an amazing lineup. And uh, if you have a February birthday and you don't know this already, you can send us a photo of yourself. And tonight you will be featured in the birthday slideshow and we'll sing to you. So um, please send photos if you uh, have a February birthday. And we hope to see you tonight. Um, Andrea and Harold and Jubilee Voices, can we all please give them another amazing big hand for the great discussion and the great singing. Um, and I wanna also thank Jim Harkless, Khadija Ash, Paulette Grady. I wanna uh, thank Keats, whose last name is probably not iPad, and Sharon Clark Neapolitano, and to Christina, whose name I don't remember, and Jackie Berry, thank you. Um, Andrea, do you wanna say if I forgot anybody and also add in the last names I forgot? Yes, that's um, Khadijah Ash and Paulette Grady, Christina Bussey, Keith's last name is Moore, not iPad. And um, I think uh, Dr. Jackie Berry, thank you all for welcoming us in and thank you. We love singing at DAS. We love singing for you because part of our mission is to pass the songs down so you can pass them on to your friends and family. And so, we're all part of this mission to promote freedom and culture. And Harold. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, baby. 
Harold Blackford, my dear husband. <laughs> That's great. I was, I was about to take him if you weren't going to claim him. <laughs> I am so sorry. Oh my goodness. Why didn't you speak up? Uh, anyway, <laughs> That's thank great. you all. I am so embarrassed. Thank you all. Speak up next. No, uh, that was beautiful. Thank you, Andrea. So I have to say, like, that's maybe one of the um, the downsides of this whole square singing together technology is we've gotten used to really just representing ourselves, right? It's just us in our little one off square. So Andrea, it's not often we get to sing with two people in the same square. And we love that. So thank you for blending your voices for us, Andrea and Harold. And thank you again to everybody in this room. Um, I want to remind everybody out there on Facebook Live that if uh, you are interested in joining us in this room, you can go to Rebels DC daily antidote and click on join us in the virtual room and find us here for a little longer still. Thanks so much for joining us today. Hope to see you tomorrow. We have lots of really cool weeks of singing coming up, lots going on for Women's History Month and uh, uh, Library of Congress Archive Challenge Week coming up. So please stick with us and sing with us throughout the month of March and the rest of February. Great to have you here. Thank you.